Hi, I'm Val Hart in San Antonio, Texas, founder of Val Hart and Friends at ValHart.com. Welcome to The Real Dr. Doolittle Show, the show for animals and the people who love them. I've been called a real-life Dr. Doolittle many times in my career as an expert animal communicator, behaviorist, pet psychic, and master healer. My mission and passion is to improve the lives of animals the world over by helping humans learn how to speak their language, how to understand their viewpoints, and heal. After all, our love of animals helps us be better humans, and the more balanced and healthy we are, the more balanced and healthy they can be, too. Be sure and look for my CDs on iTunes, and to find out more about my work and to receive your free Quick Start Animal Talk course, just go to my website at valhart.com. While you're there for a limited time, you can also apply for a complimentary Happy Animal Assessment Session. And if you want to learn how to be your own Dr. Doolittle, check out the world's first complete Animal Communication Made Easy system available now on my website at valhart.com. Thank you and enjoy the show. Hi, this is Val Hart, the real Dr. Doolittle, and today I'm here talking with Monique Morimoto Flaherty. She has a unique capacity to inspire and motivate people to discover, embrace, and live from their deepest potential. Monique believes deeply in the capacity and drive of the human soul to love and be fully self-expressed, and her work reflects this belief and is her life's calling. Monique loves animals, nature, and interspecies growth and learning. Although her life path has included over 20 years in the life science industry and 10 years of successful entrepreneurship as a coach and consultant, she was actually trained in equine-guided coaching by Wisdom Horse Coaching and Nicole Burkholzer. She has co-authored two books and created a guided meditation CD that continue to nurture listeners' spirits. Welcome, Monique. Thank you, Val. It's great to be here today. Great. I'm delighted. I have to just want to start with how much I love your tagline, which is about connecting people and horses to transform the world. Thank you. That that actually came to me in a meditation. Uh, One of the things that I I love to do is to bring people into uh, relationships with themselves and with others that have a life-changing difference and have an impact in the world. And uh, the work that I do with horses is a really wonderful way of creating that uh, with mm-hmm. people and with the horses. Yeah, tell me more about that. Why why do you see that as being true? Well, the the horse the horses are related to in this equine guided coaching in a way that acknowledges them as sentient beings and mm-hmm. uh, delves into their inner wisdom. And whereas mm-hmm. a lot of times when people have horses, they they may not experience them or relate to them in terms of their having some inner wisdom to offer them. But they're really very deep, uh, beautiful beings. And then yeah. people get to to experience the benefit of having a relationship with the horse that's very different from um, riding or you know doing something else that's more utilitarian. It's a real genuine right. relationship. Right. Uh, tell me, tell us a story about that. What have you seen happen with people? I, I love what you said. I just want to uh, throw this out. When people go from my horse is like my car, you know, it's just like you said, utilitarian. Mm-hmm. I get on it, I ride around, I, you know, feed it, care for it, brush it, saddle it, whatever. Um, and then that's, you know, like the extent of the partnership or the relationship. It's really, um, to me, it's very sad. You know, and, and so I think one of the things we connect with, you and I and others hopefully also, is that our horses have so much more to offer. Mm-hmm. So what, what do you see happen for people when they get this part, when they go deeper? Well, I had a, a client working in a workshop with this little pony. He's a mini, actually. And mm-hmm. um, he was standing with his back towards us and mm-hmm. in, in a corner of uh, one of the paddocks. And she mm-hmm. chose to work with him and went in and stood with him. And the whole time, he just kept himself apart from her. And mm-hmm. I asked her, well, what's going on with you that, that you know, he's he, for him, for you that he's having this kind of response? And yeah. um, she said, well, you know, I hold myself apart from people. Oh, wow. And And I had noticed her sitting apart from the rest of the group and, Kind of isolating herself and not participating in the in the rest of the group, and she mm-hmm. realized the impact that that can have because she was feeling 
uh, un- unattended to by him. Wow. And as soon as she had that awareness, he looked at me and <laughs> looked back at her and started eating. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that. And what a beautiful way to ex- to express what I call the human-animal-body-mind connection. It's like how our animals reflect and mirror us. Exactly. You know, they sh- they're our best teachers. You know, I know our horses, I think, are always our best Writing instructors are best coaches, you know, they have so much to share with us when we know how to hear them. And they're totally non judgmental. Yeah. The horse can provide feedback to a person that is so obvious uh and non judgmental and it's just coming from their nature and it it yeah. does reflect where the person is emotionally and how connected they are to what their truth is in that moment. It's yeah. Just uh, amazing work. Yeah, yeah. How do you think working with horses makes us better people, better leaders, better team members? Um, I know some of what you talk about is with corporate training. Mm-hmm. Can you talk about that for a moment, Monique? Well, uh, the horses will respond to people that they respect and that they feel are uh, safe for them mm-hmm. to be with. So mm-hmm. when in leadership especially, a lot of people are unaware of the impact that they have or what some of their underlying assumptions are about about how they lead. And I've, I've facilitated um, corporate workshops where a person will be practically dragging the horse from point A to point B <laughs> while his colleagues are sitting there looking at the horse saying, oh, yeah, I've felt like that a few times. <laughs> um, and, yeah. and the person has no idea that they're doing this. So no. it's a really great way of bringing awareness to uh-huh. um, the individual. That's great. And then, the person will have, okay, so just take a couple of breaths and connect. Mm-hmm. Connect mm-hmm. before you begin the task. Mm-hmm. Connect to the mm-hmm. horse. Um, earn the horse's confidence. Uh, show up as a confident, purposeful person, but without an agenda to drag the horse. And mm-hmm. then the the whole energy shifts, and the person feels it in their body. Uh, they feel what it feels like to be in partnership with the horse, and then they can take that a bit of information and experience into their uh, work life. Mm. Oh, man, I love this. Ugh. I want to give everyone a way to find out more about you now. Uh, so if in case they're listening and wanting to, you know, go online and find you, uh, your website is uh, diamondhorsecoaching.com. That's right. Yep, uh, www.diamondhorsecoaching.com. Um, and you have another website here. What's that one? Soulworkscoaching.com? Soulworks, yes. That's actually my primary business. I started uh, it ah. in 2001, and I've been working with individuals and with organizations to uh, empower people to bring their souls fully into their lives and in their work. Mm. Oh, I love it. And Great. add forces to that, and there's nothing better. <laughs> <laughs> powerful, isn't it? Mm-hmm. It's really it sure powerful. Is. Yeah, yeah. Can you tell us a story about someone that's been through this experience and exercise and what happened for them? Well, I have a client who's been working on her own personal growth, and as a result of the work that she did with horses and and the work that she did on her own in between sessions, which is really where the the value of coaching happens Mm -hmm. uh, for clients. It's what happens in between the sessions. Mm -hmm. Uh, She was able to transform her working life and left her job, got a new job uh, with uh, much better pay, more responsibility, more authority, Mm -hmm. um, and uh, she's really doing something that she absolutely loves. Mm. Wow. I love that. that. Yeah, I get it. Okay. So I have another question for you. Tell me about your journey with horses and especially as a coach. How did you get started doing this? Well, you know, a a lot of women uh, love horses when they're little girls, and I'm one of those. Me too. I was a horse-crazy kid. You bet. Me too. I read every Black Stallion book and uh, (laughs) any book I could get my hands on in the library. Yeah. And, you know, life as life has it, I didn't have a whole lot of opportunity to actually be with horses. So it it was a dream that I needed to let go of and... um, let go of for many, many years. And mm. after my father died in 2004, I saw how short life is. Yeah. And I realized that as a coach, you know, my whole life is about um, walking the talk. So if I'm not yeah. living my dream, then how can I expect my clients to live their dreams? Oh, boy. So it was a bit of a challenge there, and I decided to get involved with horses and uh, found a workshop that was run by 
my now dear friend Nicole Burkholzer mm-hmm. in uh, Western Massachusetts, and um, was hooked, totally mm-hmm. hooked by mm-hmm. the experience that I had, uh, which showed me this this beautiful horse who actually he just died recently. Mm-hmm. Um, he, um, I was working on my marriage, and he showed me that I did not believe that my husband wanted to be with me. Ah. Got and it. Kept, he kept walking away from me <laughs> and kept walking away, and he mm-hmm. stayed with me when I said, uh, oh, I'm worth being with. Ah. I can be, I can, somebody wants to be with me, and I, I want to be with them, and I'm worth being with. And that horse stayed with me, and he walked with me uh, no matter where I went around the arena for the next t- ten minutes. Wow. And up until that point, I was chasing him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I got chill bumps. Oh, I get that so much. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So, okay. That's how I was introduced to the work, and I've done uh, some workshops with uh, Epona folks out in Arizona, and mm-hmm. uh, chose Wisdom Horse Coaching, who, which are based in uh, Minneapolis, to do my apprenticeship with. Okay. Wow. I love that. Ooh. Oh, goodness. Okay. So so tell me more about your story. Well, one of the things that I was, that I think are really are challenges for people when they think about living their dream, uh it's about actually stepping out of what they've been doing and into that new life. Okay? And it really takes some courage and support and belief in themselves. And that's one of the things that I find working with horses uh, affords people in the moment they can believe in themselves to accomplish a task with a horse or, or be with the horse in a particular way and they get immediate feedback. Yes. And I learn that every time I'm with the horses. Yes. Uh, that, you know, making that choice is the right choice. And you can tell by how you feel in your body. You can tell by the energy level that you're experiencing. The um, and sometimes by the, the level of challenge that you might be experiencing, like, ooh, is this really something I want to do? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So that's all really important as, in terms of part of my journey because it, it's um, uh, something that I've experienced and can walk through and have walked through and can support people in walking through um, with horses or without. Right, right. Oh, man. Um, do you have horses? I have a own? horse. Yep. I have a horse of my own. He's actually uh, retired, and he's living in Florida. He oh. goes out and plays golf every day. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, I wanted him to be in a, a place where he could have free range and um, yeah. be with other horses and be well cared for and, um, and be cost-effective for me. So he's living the life of Riley, as they say, <laughs> in, uh, in Florida. I love that. Oh, that's great. Okay, great. Um, so one of the things you say is that we're all evolving together. Mm-hmm. Our animals are part of our spiritual evolution, and we see ourselves reflected in their love. Mm-hmm. And that's both our animals and our own true nature, uh, which is love. The hardest lesson for us humans is to learn that we are lovable, and our animals give us that unconditionally every day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh. So it sounds like there's a story behind that one, too. <laughs> that actually has to do with my dog. Yeah. Um, I had had a dog named Jasper. He was a Brittany, and I um, uh-huh. had him from a puppy. And I realized uh, anybody who's had a dog and who's loved a dog um, and yeah. who experiences the love of a dog knows, you know, will relate to this story. Um, and he was my pride and joy. And what I learned from him was that the love that I felt from him was really my own love. Mm. And that he showed me that, uh, that, that the heart, you know, I have a huge heart. Yeah. And I think that's what dogs do for people. Uh, a woman that is in one of my clients, she brings her dog, he's a therapy dog, and she was telling a story this morning actually about mm-hmm. having her little dog at a nursing home, and there was a circle of these elderly women who all had their picture taken with him. <laughs> um, they all wanted to pat him. They were trying to give him treats. <laughs> and <laughs> you know, he totally lit up their lives in <laughs> that moment. And what they were experiencing was their own love. 
Um, mm. And I think dogs and cats, maybe not so much cats because they're still they they have they bring a different kind of sense of evolution. If they do. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. But, but do, dogs and horses definitely are um, are helping humans evolve spiritually they are. Yes. and helping us evolve um, yeah. as being loving individuals. Yeah. yeah. Reminding us that that's our source. You know, we we come from love. We are love and. Sometimes the only loving being a person might have is is their animal, and um, that can yeah. that's pretty sad. It's sad in that they don't have other people ref- yeah. reflecting that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And at least they have the animal. At least they have say, the dog. Yeah, yeah, you know when we have animals, uh, uh, you may know this, but people who lose their animals grieve them more deeply and for longer than they do the loss of human friends mm-hmm. and family often. Right. Um, and I think it's—I think that's because the animals get so close to our heart. That's right. You know, they touch us in such deep ways, and like you said, they reflect love for us. Um, they show us so much. They're our teachers, our healers, you know, our partners, uh, our companions. Um, we don't have to pretend or have masks, mm-hmm. you know, or 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 you know, uh, play. I, I don't know. You know what I mean? It's like we don't have to do. We we can be our real self with our animals. Because they know who we really are. They get us, whether we get us or not. Mm-hmm, right. <laughs> um, but they always do because they see deep into our soul. You know? They do. And yeah. they are so innocent. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes they're little devilish things. Oh, God, yes. <laughs> Definitely the devil The devil can be in them, <laughs> uh, which is part of the fun. Uh-huh. But they're not sitting there in judgment of us the way we usually are of ourselves. You know, the dog yeah. won't say, oh, you gave me this crap again to <laughs> yeah. suffer. <laughs> well, hopefully not. That. <laughs> you might just turn their nose away and say, okay, what else? Uh-huh. Um, and and so they're, they're much kinder. Mm-hmm. Um, they are. Yeah, they can be. Mm-hmm. And they can also be teachers. And, you know, some of the best teaching or teachers are not necessarily kind. That's true. You know, they find the lesson that works to get the lesson across to the student in the best way possible. <laughs> true. If we're paying attention, yeah, you got it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you have a real spiritual theme in your work. I do. Uh, my whole life's journey has been about uh, being as fully human as I possibly can be, which means mm-hmm. embracing the divinity that... Uh, lives in and through me that is me, and mm-hmm. that's basically the the nut in a nutshell the my philosophy for all of humanity is that we um, we are all manifestations of the divine in our own unique ways. We're all needed mm-hmm. as part of yeah. the, the whole. Um, yeah. We're all precious, and the life of being human is when we live it to the fullest means discovering this as deeply as we possibly can and living it. Yeah. And so embracing our full humanity and our full divinity. So my my that's my philosophy, that's where I uh, my sort of my come from place and um my work with the animals enriches that because they help me get grounded within that place of the beingness and that's what it, they also do for my clients. Yes. Like just be in the being. Be in the being. Hang out. Yeah. I know animals get, tend to get worried or uh, reactive when we're not being fully present. Mm-hmm. You know, they live in the moment. They and they, they get uncomfortable when we're not. Um, I think it's uh, partly a safety thing, you know, and partly because we're here now and we're wanting, we're connecting. And if you're, if the, like the lights are on and nobody's home with you. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> they don't get that. <laughs> I, I've seen it with people who are really in their heads. Yeah. Uh, the yeah. horse will stand oh, there, but the ears are like mm, sort of back a little bit. The so. tail's flat. <laughs> like I don't know. And then the you know the chatter, the mental chatter. It's like right. Oh, take right. a few breaths, feel your feet, and the whole demeanor of the horse changes. Yes. <laughs> I love that. Oh God. Okay, so. How can we best connect with our animals from a quiet mind? What, what do you? What would you tell our listeners today about that? Well, to cultivate a quiet mind means turning off 
the mind at some level, but it also means creating a quiet environment. Okay. And it doesn't have to be constantly quiet, but uh, one of my favorite practices is keeping the radio off in the car. Okay. Um, not getting on the cell phone immediately when I get in the car. Okay. Uh, that's probably illegal in some states, but <laughs> What's it's illegal say? here in Massachusetts. That's good to know. Okay, go uh-huh. ahead. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Um, so just staying off the phone and turning off the radio and being quiet, listening, yeah. listening to the sounds of the car, yeah. taking even two or three minutes to sit quietly first thing in the morning when you get up yeah. um, before the coffee because it's difficult to have a quiet mind after you've had coffee because <laughs> uh, that is a stimulant. But just listen. Mm-hmm. Listen to the silence. Um, and and cultivating that mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, those those spaces in life. Uh, yeah. Another great practice is to take three to five deep breaths okay. periodically throughout the day. Yeah. Where okay. You just inhale all the way to your toes, and you can just feel the breath going all the way to your toes, even drawing up strength from the earth and going all the way up to the top of your head. Mm. Yeah. And exhaling. Yeah. Letting go. And becoming present, being present in the body. Mm-hmm. Um, quieting the mind, becoming a vessel. Okay. I I find that the, the body is the only thing about us that's in the moment. Mm. Often our minds are somewhere else, but the body is always here now. It's always in the present moment. It can't not be. Yeah. So when we get with our bodies, which horses are all completely embodied, dogs are embodied, cats, birds. I have a little bird. And yeah. He's, yeah. You know, yeah. Totally in his body. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Finding the quiet within the body. It's another great way if you have an ache or a pain, go to that place that might be a little sore and hang out there mm-hmm. with your mind. Breathe. Yeah. Breathe into it. Breathe yeah. into it. Except here, it, yeah. Is there a message here? Yes. Uh, practicing eating slowly. I guess mm. that, that's probably my biggest challenge is eating slowly. <laughs> yeah. You know, having yeah. a mindful meal or... Yeah, a the, mindful meal. Mindful I like meal. That. Yeah. Chewing carefully. Um, really th- taking time to think about all the people and the possibly the animals that are making this meal possible. Mm-hmm. Yes. Is a whole network, a whole, a whole vast, complex web of people that are right. responsible for every piece of food that we have in our houses and right. or beverage or whatever. So, and then as that, as we begin to do that, it there is some space created in the mind, and as we create a little bit of space, as that space gathers some space. Mm-hmm. then mm-hmm. it itself will can expand and um, the desire for the quiet increases. Oh, I like that. Yeah, that's true. Because we 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 enjoy quiet. You know, I think some of us, I, I remember the first time I actually had a quiet moment. This is probably 20 years ago. Mm. Like, oh, it's very quiet. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that I like this. <laughs> I'm not used it, to this. You know what? It can be a little uncomfortable, mm-hmm. can it? Because it's different. It's like outside our comfort zone of the normal bombardment. Right. You know that that becomes our normality, not a healthy normality, um, but a uh, what we're accustomed to. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. And the accustomed to that that reminds me of the story of the frogs. Have you heard of the story of the two frogs? Uh, go ahead. Well, you have a frog who is um, thrown into a pot of boiling water, and guess what? He's going to jump out. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, you know, I, I don't like this. It's mm-hmm. very mm-hmm. uncomfortable. But you put a frog in uh, a, uh, some tepid water, or just room temperature, lukewarm, mm-hmm. and you turn the heat up underneath it, it will boil to death mm-hmm. because it just it adjusts and adjusts and adjusts mm-hmm. and adjusts. So I think yeah, people are dying all the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. We're we're a lot like that. We just yes. sort of sit in the water, and as the heat's being turned up around us, we we adjust because we're really we we can be very adaptable. <laughs> we don't realize that what's being stripped out of our lives are our joys, 
or the things that are most important to us, even little things Mm -hmm. that are important to us. Yeah. Um, And we get caught up in the the whole what cultural pressure or familial pressure or societal mm-hmm. pressure we get or our own internal pressures we get caught up yeah. in that and we lose focus and we lose perspective on what's really important to us yes yeah that's exactly it mm. i think our animals are constantly trying to bring us back to what's important yep you know to be present to live a mindful life to be to be comfortable in the silence because you know in the silence that you're talking about silence it's not really silence, is it? It's it's quiet. It's it's silence, but it's filled with. I mean, it's not an empty silence. No, no, it's not. I guess that's what I'm pointing at. It, yeah. It's not empty. No, it's rich. It's full. It's it's um. It's a sensory experience as opposed to a mental experience. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, feel it in the body. Yes. Uh huh. Yeah, being aware, being really consciously present, right here, right now. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's also when we can do that. It's the place that we can access our intuition and mm-hmm. access um, other dimensions, mm-hmm. um, access uh, what an animal or might be communicating. I I had an experience yes. with this mare that I tend to. She's 31 and she's had a couple mm. of strokes and. Mm. Um, she's been unwell in, in many ways, but I've been working with her and doing Reiki for her, and mm-hmm. uh, she's been coming along really well. And mm-hmm. I was hanging out with her last week, and all of a sudden I got this image of a fire. And I thought, what's that? And it occurred to me that one of the horses in our barn had had moved to another barn, and there had been a fire oh, at wow. the barn, and wow. nine horses died. Oh. And she knew this horse. And as soon as I made that connection, I said, "Oh my God, it's JJ. Mm-hmm. You, you're, you know, you're, you're. This, this is what you're saying to me." Mm-hmm. And I started talking to her out loud about it, and and uh, she completely relaxed. Mm-hmm. So without the capacity for quiet mm-hmm. and the ability to still the mind and allow the image, the sense to come forth through the intuitive place, through the, yeah. you know, that deeper place, uh, you know, I wouldn't have been able to be with her. Right. With that. Right. Right. Mm. It's quite and, moving. Yes, I, I get that. I know a lot of times, you know, the, the horses do communicate amongst themselves. They tell stories. Mm. You know, and sometimes the problem that seems to be, in in my experience of working with my clients, the problem may seem to be with that animal. And when I tune in, it's like it's something that they heard. Mm. Or it was an experience that happened to another horse. You know, or something they saw uh, happen that they, you know, they're very sensitive to injustice and mm-hmm. uh, horses especially. I think, <laughs> don't you know? Have you you've seen that, right? That they see something that's an injustice, mm-hmm. um, they will tend to hold on to that. It's like they they don't they don't acknowledge that. They don't like it. They want integrity. They want honesty. You know, they want clarity, clarity. and and they want a, a balance of justice. You know, they want um, that kind of respect. Yes. Don't you think? I do. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, but I know I've seen that happen many times. Mhm. And yeah. when that's missing, then their ability to trust the human really diminishes. Yes. Mhm. That's right. That's right. You know, I think it's interesting you're talking about when we get into a, a quiet or a, the place of silence, that rich place of silence, that's when we do access communication and we do connect. Um, is we're more aware and we're present now, right? We're more grounded and present. Um, and they can literally tell us what they need to tell us or we can have a conversation. You know, and that's something I do for all of my students and, you know, my clients are the best, you know, of what I can to coach them in what time we have. But um, it's it's so important, and I think any animal lover can do this. This is just a, a way to connect, you know. Um, I really love what you're doing, Monique. Thank you. So important. Um, you said something about um, the importance of parents and paying attention to um, animal loving animals and being sensitive to them. Can you explain that for a moment? Well, it, it, I think children have an affinity ah, for yes. animals that often adults may not yes. uh, acknowledge. 
Yeah. Uh, and I remember as a little girl, uh, I would go to the zoo and I would cry at the elephants mm -hmm. um, because yeah. I knew how sad they were. I yes. got to see it. I felt it. And I didn't know how to deal with that. I had nobody to talk to about. Exactly. You yeah. know, I feel the elephant's sadness. You know, okay, right, sure, Monique. <laughs> my, my parents really didn't know how to deal with me with that. Yeah. Um, so because kids are more open and they have less stuff of life to to um, shut down their intuitive parts, and mm -hmm. they're really much more innocent and loving. In many ways, they can relate to animals on a uh, much purer level than adults mm -hmm. can. Yes. Uh, so parents honoring that for their kids, um, acknowledging that well, this is a really important part of a, a child's development is to um, have somehow or other preserve that innocence and that the openness mm -hmm. um, and the connection. Um, mm -hmm. So to have pets that are uh, that can you know tolerate being pulled and <laughs> brought in, mm -hmm. loved <laughs> by babies and, and uh, yeah. you know, toddlers, yeah. etc., is a, a really yeah. uh, wonderful gift for the children yeah. and for the pets. Right, right. I'm remembering a. A horse I, I worked with a stallion, um, a Grand Prix level uh, dressage stallion, and um, his uh, trainer and owner and rider, uh, they they competed of course, and um, she uh, she had a, a daughter I think I think maybe two or three years old at the time, and uh, the stallion was a bit of a handful you know as stallions can be, mm -hmm. a bit of a handful to to manage you know and. Um, you know, frequently they would find the daughter under his feet, you know, um, or <laughs> mm. perfectly safe. I, yep. I mean, the the horse uh, totally got, uh, you know, the child and uh, took great pains to take care of her and, you mm. know, really connected with her, adored her, loved her, would do anything she asked pretty much. Um, you know, when I spoke with her, the horse about it, um, he just said that he had known this one for, you know, for a very long time, the spirit, mm -hmm. um, knew when she was being, you know, created in her mommy's tummy. Mm -hmm. um, and they had talked while the, the baby was still even in, inside her mom wow. and uh, was uh, delighted to have her to play with. Um, and it, it was just so touching and so sweet. And, and um, you know, of course, he's, He's he's totally loving and honoring her, and she's just being fully herself, mm -hmm. you know. And they just had a m magical relationship. That's beautiful. Yeah, it was very very cool. Yeah. So, you know, that happens frequently. It does. And I know you probably were like me. I'm betting, you know, as as youngsters and little children ourselves, we were very connected. We were intuitive. We picked up what our our fellow four leggeds were thinking and mm -hmm. um and, and we knew we were more in tune before the world shut us down and blocked us and taught us different. Right. <laughs> right. Exactly. So yeah, so I'm I'm just gonna celebrate for a minute that we've made our way back um to knowing how to connect and listen and be fully present and bring the gifts of our animals back to transform our world. Mm. So, yeah, thank That's you. That's a beautiful reminder. Thank you. Thanks. Yes, it is a celebration. It is, isn't it? It really is, yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's this, There seems to be an interesting kind of a special connection between women and horses. Yes. Have you found that to be true? Absolutely. Uh, my barn, I work out of uh, Horse Play Stables in Milton, Mass., and mm -hmm. uh, there are, oh, jeez. 10 or 12 young girls who've been with Terry, who runs the place, since, uh -huh. some of them since they were three. Wow. And some of them are in their 20s now. And uh -huh. um, I think horses for 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 girls and for women um, are a way of connecting to our power mm -hmm. and to our majesty, our beauty, our grace, um, our suppleness. Um, our maternal instincts and just our sort of raw animal power mm -hmm. that uh, is acceptable in, uh -huh, uh -huh. in this culture. Yeah, uh, there aren't a whole lot of places where women can be powerful in mm -hmm. the world. We don't mm -hmm. have a lot of role models for that. Right. So being at a barn and being able to work with a uh, a being who's you know a thousand pounds when you're mm -hmm. ten years old, yeah. uh, and having that horse listen and respect you is just an amazing experience. It and, is, isn't it? Um, girls yeah. being able to work with horses develop such a, a a wonderful sense of leadership and confidence, and 
there's that plus the dynamics of the barn itself with uh, and all the socializing that happens with the kids and mm -hmm. uh, responsibilities and chores, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just a great environment. Yes, it is. I feel like I'm having a second childhood there. <laughs> Which I as am, actually. As you are. <laughs> <laughs> I'm totally That's enjoying why it. why we do it. Yes, exactly. That's why it's important. I'm a champion mucker. A champion mucker. <laughs> <laughs> I still have my mucking tool mm -hmm. that I, I got ages ago, my first one. I still have it. It's that, kind of broken a little bit, but <laughs> I still love it. That, that's actually a, a really that's lovely funny. meditation. Is uh, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. Shovel. An active meditation. Yeah. To muck. Yeah. To muck, muck, and just notice the sights and the sounds and mm -hmm. the smells yeah. and uh -huh. um, yeah. yeah. And if you don't have a horse and you don't have the capacity to muck, you could do the same thing with a litter box, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> the sound, the smells of a litter box just cannot compete that's with the true. smells of a barn no. or a stable and horses and. and and straw and, mm. and even horse manure. Yeah. <laughs> it's just not, not the totally. same. Not <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> All right. Um, so you have some things for our listeners. I, I do. Believe. Would you like to tell us about that? Sure. Okay. Um, I have a, a tip sheet on quieting the mind for a, a deeper connection to your animal friend. Cool. And um, I would love to email that out to anybody who requests it via email. Okay. Um, and my email, the easiest one is uh, for people to take note of, is coach, C-O-A-C-H, Monique, M-O-N-I-Q-U-E, at Verizon.net. Okay. Coach Monique at Verizon.net. So everybody listening, if you'd like to get her free tips sheet on quieting the mind for a deeper connection to your animal friend, just email her and she'll send that to you. Great. Um, anything else? <clears throat> well, I have a, a blog that oh, cool. I um, write occasionally. Okay. And uh, that's associated with uh, DiamondHorseCoaching.com. And okay. I do a lot of workshops in the greater Boston area oh, uh, cool. with horses. So if folks are in listening from that area, they um, get on my mailing list by sending me an email. And I um, uh, would love to have you come to a workshop. Awesome. I like that. Great. So, again, the websites are www.DiamondHorseCoaching.com. Um, and then, of course, your other one, if someone feels the call to work with you in a different capacity, uh, your other website is soulworkscoaching.com. And anything else, Monique, you want to share with us before we finish up here? Well, I really appreciate the work that you do, Val, ah. because I, I, I see you as a conduit for um, bringing the closer communication and understanding uh, for people about their animals and uh, and about themselves as well. I yeah, know you yeah. do work with uh, people and right. and people. So I right. thank you right. for the work that you do and the difference that you make in the thank animals' you. lives and in the people's lives and in the world. It's really thank you. invaluable. Yeah, thank you. We're kindred spirits. We are. Yeah. Ah. <sighs> Okay, well, we'll finish it up here. Thank you so much. I have so enjoyed talking to you. This has just been wonderful, and thank you again for your work and uh, what you're doing and bringing about with horses, which are near and dear to my heart. So. Well, you're welcome, Val, and I um, okay. appreciate it. Okay. Well, well, we'll catch up again another time, and I'm looking forward to seeing what you do next. Thank you. Thanks, Monique. You're welcome. Thanks for listening to the show. For more information or to listen to other podcasts, go to valhart.com forward slash blog. And if you're someone who values a non-invasive, holistic solution to resolving problems with your dogs, cats, and horses, and you want better behaved, healthier, and happier animals, just go to my website at valhart.com to apply for a complimentary happy animal assessment session. And be sure and remember to look for my CDs on iTunes. Learning how to talk with animals is fun and will change your life. So while you're there at my site, get my free Quick Start Animal Talk course and check out the world's first complete animal communication made easy system. May the love of animals bless you, teach you, inspire you, heal you, and reconnect you to the circle of life. Mm -hmm.